Here we go again! Something's going crazy in the card price world. Make sure you guys smash the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome uh, content. Oh boy, you know, it just isn't a day without something going topsy-turpsy, lefty, sideways, all over the place. And, uh, Vice's Starfrost. Actually, the amount of hype that is being built right now on Mana Diem is actually insane. Now, I, I got the chance to, to play against Mana Diem over the weekend here. My, my personal experience was... Nice sphere mode, man! Oh, you can't... Oh, you, you lost your board to the sphere mode? You can't recover? Handshake. That's uh, That was my experience with the deck, but you've got a lot of people that are looking at this right now, and the Vice of Starfrost has shot up exponentially. As I'm filming this today, um, they were they were $35 on the back end of the market. Now, the, the Ultra is not quite as crazy, but we are seeing value being shaved off of both of the these versions of cards and uh, being shaved off. I mean, like they're being bought out. All right, it, you're not going to be picking up any of the Starlights for under 200 plus anymore. You know that that ship long gone. All right, uh, 240, 250. But is it is it really all that it's cooked up to be at this point in time? I don't know. Combo players are a very special breed of players. They definitely enjoy the game a little bit more than certain things, but I mean, you've also got to remember, you know, with all of the different variations to this deck, um, all, and it just, you know, you get another round of support next set here, so you may as well dig in here and be able to want to play the game. I don't have much else to say on this. I'm not particularly all that crazy that these prices are inverting at the way they are, but once again, I'm not surprised to see all of the hype, you know, between Calarium, between Vices, all of the immediate, you know, influxes that are happening here, it's happening relatively quickly. So, buckle up, buckaroo. And next up is the Fire Hydra Rescue Ace. Robbie, you've been pushing this deck so much, you know, you already said that, you know, players are going to have a hard time playing it. What's going on with this? Why are suddenly hydrants over the $40 mark? You know, they were 35 last week. They've gained seven plus more dollars of value. Yeah, the two support cards were commons. People are looking at that deck again and they're going, hmm, you know, maybe I'll play this. I watched a couple of Rescue Ace players attempt to play this deck. And I'm not saying that the deck itself is, you know, bad. But the issue that they were running into was, they were like, this deck sucks, but some of the combo line plays that I saw them making weren't necessarily the greatest. The deck is not very user-friendly. But here is the important thing about this. The Dia Bellstar package coming out in October, you, you can thank our dear old witch support out here, getting the ability to toggle for, you guessed it, level one fire monsters. <sighs> I gotta love the fire attribute, getting some major love out here. Um, you are gonna get the chance to see some additional power for this. So if you're picking up the deck right now and you're like, I kinda wanna push it, keep in mind that you do have that additional wave of support coming here in the near future. You're gonna be looking at this and you're like, oh, well, um, hmm, maybe it doesn't work right now with this, or maybe, you know, I, I hunker down and try to play it. Um, the biggest thing you've got to worry about is, yeah, obviously a hand trap does mess up your day, but when you tell me why, when, if you're playing this deck, you can't even tell me what the purpose of Proxy F Magician is, you've got a lot of research to do. It is a deck that's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort to learn, but when you get the combo lines down, and by combo lines I mean that you successfully set four and then, you know, play through your opponent, then that's where I think the deck will shine. But if you can overcome that, the deck will be very good. But price point for this, this is stupid. Labyrinth. Robbie, Ariana just cratered up like a day or two ago. Yeah, Ariana did get buyout. It, it happened. The green maid went to the moon. That was the market watch for uh, for Saturday was... Your time for Labyrinth isn't uh, isn't doing too good. Well, here's the other big thing on that very same topic matter here. Labyrinth, heading on in to the next format, is looking amazing. Um, to my knowledge, Labyrinth card should be getting the reprint in the tins. Problem is, is if you plan on playing competitive for, or for August, um, in the very early stages of September, that's still five to six weeks that you gotta, you know, go to pick up the deck. So, a lot of people right now are, uh, they are taking advantage of the market. 
they're getting as much money out of this stuff as they actually can. And I don't blame them for that. When you're looking at how crazy Labyrinth is, remember, they just got the discard set a trap activated during your opponent's turn. All right, that in-house archetypal synergy is dumb. All right, and Labyrinth is projecting a lot of people are looking at this going, you know, I, I think this is going to be one of the best decks in the room. And I don't disagree with some of that mentality, honestly, especially when the TCG is just streamlining Eradicator Epidemic Virus that, Eradicator Epidemic Virus that, this, that. I mean, your mom, uh, it's uh, it's rough out here. So all the Labyrinth hype that has been continuing to be generated, we've seen how many quarter century secret buyouts actually occurring with this. And it's not stopping anytime soon. So once again... Be aware, Labyrinth prices are still continuing to trend up. You can thank Age of Overlord for all of this. You got a good two to three months on the horizon here for the TCG, for you know all of that to kind of come on through here and you know dissipate. But that's what you're looking at for the time being. So, uh, yeah, um, I hope you don't plan on buying Labyrinth for the crazy amount of time. Next up is Jinzo. <sighs> This has been a ride. So a lot of a lot of people have been going, well, you know, if Labyrinth's going to be a top contending deck out here, let's buy out Jinzo. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, Jinzo does not stop the discard to go search or to go set the trap and then have the trap deployed. Well, what if the Jinzo touches that? You're not summoning Jinzo turn one of the game going first. That With Monitor, Yu-Gi-Oh, that's just not fundamentally how that works. Um, I think a lot of people are looking at Jinzo kind of as like the meme savior at this point in time. And I don't think that it's a good idea, but I, I do want to touch on it because a lot of these videos are about the ideas and things that the community kind of comes together on and goes, ooh, Jinzo, this seems really good. No, it's not. It's a lot of the community is coping right now because they want Jinzo to be good. Now, I mean, that's not stopping from Konami from, you know, slamming out an entire new subdivision of Jinzo. Or, you know, hey, my opponent activated a trap. I can summon Jinzo from the deck. Um, we're not doing that level of support right now. But the community, the community flavor of the week that they're coping on right now is Jinzo. So... Ah, uh, I don't know, man. If you if you continue to like track Jinzo throughout the week here, and you're like, "Ooh, why is Jinzo? Why why is this going so? What what why is it all over the place?" It's because the reverberations of Labyrinth hype right now that people are like, "Oh my God, like this is so crazy! Like I can't believe I'm going to main three Jinzos to beat this." This is literally the scrub player mentality at its finest, and it's never going to work out. Trust me, I already read three comments from people this week going, Robbie, pie out, Jinzo. It's good. No. No, it's not. All right? It, it is not. Next up is Vanquish Soul. So Vanquish Soul rode off into the sunset. Where to go? Where to go? Va Vanquish Soul? Hello? Vanquish Soul? Are you? Where to go? Um, Vanquish Soul prices are spinning down right now which is a good thing, all right? Now, the reason why I want to put the spotlight back on this, just to mention this, is they did get their next level of support in Age of Overlord. And if these card prices are going to continue to go down, a lot more eyes are going to divert away from this. So, this is my heads up to you. Keep an eye on Vanquish Soul cards. If you've been wanting the core and it was way too expensive on release, as those eyes divert, as we get closer to Age of Overlord out here, in October, this might be something that you might be able to score a pretty big W on, not only to have the deck, but for the chance to play it, because more and more people are going to forget that it's a deck, me included. Um, and once that new wave of support hits, you're going to take a look at that, and you're going to go, wow, you know, like, this seems like it could actually do something. So not only on the price front of things continuing to go down, but on the, the silent metagame front here, where you might actually get the chance to get a pretty big, interesting surprise on the meta. So, shout out to Vanquish Soul. Entering into the sleeper phase here. Um, I do want to see what ends up happening in the near future with this deck. Maybe, maybe something else a little bit more interesting actually happens, but... That's what we're looking at for now. So please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Uh
<laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.